Hi everyone. We hope you find this Good Friday service meaningful as we head towards Easter Sunday. Thank you for joining on this Good Friday. Tim, for joining me as we go through this Good Friday litany, what happened on that day and what is to come. Good morning. This morning I will be reading from all four gospel accounts of the events surrounding the crucifixion of Christ. Jesus is condemned. Matthew chapter 27. Jesus stood before the Roman governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He asked. So you say, answered Jesus. But he said nothing in response to the accusations of the chief priests and elders. So Pilate said to him, Don't you hear all the things they accuse you of? But Jesus refused to answer a single word, which made the governor greatly surprised. What should I do with this Jesus called the Messiah? Pilate asked the crowd. Crucify him, they all answered. But Pilate asked, What crime has he committed? Then they started shouting at the top of their voices, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that this was no use to go on, but that a riot might break out, he took some water washed his hands in front of the crowd, and said, I am not responsible for the death of this man. This is your doing. So he had Jesus whipped. He handed him over to be crucified. Why doesn't Jesus say anything? Why doesn't he proclaim who he is? Why doesn't he confront the disbelief of the crowd and the arrogant cowardice of the powers that be? But he says nothing. Surely there are others who will speak up for him. Where are the lepers that were healed? Where are the blind who can now see? Where are all the people who ate the bread and the fish on the hillside that day? Where are those who followed Jesus so easily when they thought he was going to be a king? And yet no one speaks. No voice is heard in the crowd coming to Jesus' defense. Jesus is alone. He stands before Pontius Pilate, the power of Rome, weakness standing in front of strength. And yet Pilate, the ruthless enforcer for the empire, is not really in control here. He can't make Jesus confess. He can't quiet the crowds. For all of his power, he cannot find the courage to do what is right. So he does what is safe. He yields to the crowd for the sake of order. Pontius Pilate then washes his hands, a symbol of his lack of courage and strength and power, his lack of commitment to do what is just and right. The one who stands before the governor in chains, bruised from the beatings, spit on his face, is the person with the real strength here. Pilate washes his hands and abandons Jesus. But Jesus doesn't wash his hands, not of God's will, not of you and me. He is determined to love us, regardless of the cost. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are ashamed to admit how often we wash our hands of you. 
Give us the courage to follow you, even when all others reject you. Help us to be determined and firm in our conviction that following your will and showing love to all is more important than any other treasure that we have in this life. Grant that the way of the cross may be for us the way of life and peace. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is mocked. Matthew chapter 27. Then Pilate's soldiers took Jesus into the governor's palace, and the whole company gathered around him. They stripped off his clothes and put a scarlet robe on him. Then they made a crown out of thorny branches and pushed it on his head, and put a stick in his right hand. Then they knelt before him and made fun of him. Long live the king of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took the stick and hit him over the head. When they had finished making fun of him, they took the robe off and put his own clothes back on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. I cringe at the pain of the thorns, but I am wounded far more deeply by the humiliation and degradation Jesus suffered. Stripped naked for all to stare at, a ring of thorns pushed down on his head, a stick in his hand, a scarlet robe on his shoulders. Soldiers bowing in mockery, spitting, hitting, whipping. Did you know that a word came into existence because of the torture and the crucifixion of people? How cruel people can be to their fellow human beings. We hear of men and women and children suffering at the hands of others, even those who claim to love them. How unkind can we be to the people around us? We like to think we're ready to follow Jesus who offers us peace and love, but are we? Are we willing to let peace and love control us and lead us to live as people who truly want to serve others, even though it isn't always easy or convenient? There in Pilate's courtyard, we see the true servant, willing to endure anything, no complaints, no protesting his innocence, no cursing, simply accepting the cross for us, accepting all things for us. The thorns, the whip, the mockery, the nails, the cruel death for us. He loves us, even though it was our sin that caused him so much pain. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing yourself to be tried and condemned and scourged. For the joy of bringing salvation to all people and because of your great love for us, you endured the shame and pain. Amen. Simon carries the cross. Luke chapter 23. The soldiers led Jesus away, and as they were going, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon who was coming into the city from the country. They seized him, put the cross on him, and made him carry it behind Jesus. ...of wood that pressed down on him, but the weight of the burden that he carried for those whom he loved. He came to offer them life, and yet they return only death. So we see Jesus fall, proud to help Jesus carry the cross the rest of the way to the place where he'll be crucified. Simon was just a bystander on his way into town from the countryside, and yet he bears the weight of the cross to save Jesus' strength. Would I have had the courage to face the Roman soldiers and to risk being walked in front of the crowd with Christ? Would I have been so eager to share his cross, or would I have tried to become invisible in the crowd? When the soldiers were looking for somebody to press into service, would I have looked away, pretended not to know what was going on? It's easy 
to pretend. To pretend not to see the needs, the grief, or the suffering that is around us every day. It's easy to pretend not to hear the cries of help that come in so many forms from those among whom we walk and talk and live every day. It's easy to convince ourselves that we're too busy or too tired or have too much on our plates or it's just too complicated with the world as it is right now to get involved in the lives of others. There are simply too many who need too much. And yet, we remember something Jesus said, something about taking up our own cross and following him. Jesus said something about becoming a servant to all, putting ourselves last and others first. Is that what it means to be a servant? Is Jesus showing us what it means to be that kind of servant? Is that man, Simon from Cyrene, modeling for us the path of being a true follower of Jesus Christ? Let us pray. Holy God, your son came not to be served, but to serve. Forgive us for becoming so preoccupied with ourselves that we have become deaf and blind to the grief and suffering of all those around us. Constantly remind us that we cannot love you without loving others as well. Help us to always remember that to be a follower of yours means that we share in the burdens of others. Lord, show us someone whose cross we may help carry. Amen. Jesus is stripped of his clothes. John chapter 19. After the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts one part for each soldier. They also took the robe, which was made of one piece of woven cloth without any seams in it. The soldiers said to one another, Let's not tear it. Let's throw dice to see who will get it. This happened in order to make the scripture come true. They divided my clothes among themselves and gambled for my robe. And this is what the soldiers did. Jesus is forced to suffer the worst of human indignity. He stands alone as the soldiers strip him of the last thing he possesses. He is. He's completely different. Just yesterday, Jesus removed his cloak and laid it aside in order to wash his disciples' feet. And now he's allowing others to strip off his clothes. He could have stopped it. He allows them to publicly disgrace and ridicule him. He is left with nothing, nothing, not even human decency. He gave everything away, was utterly humiliated, stripped naked for us. Why? We have nothing of worth to give him. We can't pay him back for this. Where is our gratitude for this? Why does he allow himself to be so humiliated? Because of his total commitment to you and to me. He lays aside everything for us. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you that Jesus willingly allowed himself to be humiliated because of his deep commitment to each of us. He stretched out his arms of love on the hard wood of the cross so that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of Jesus and all that he endured for us. For the honor of your name. Amen. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Mark chapter 15. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. 
the notice of the accusation against him said, The King of the Jews. They also crucified two thieves with Jesus, one on his right and the other on his left. People passing by shook their heads and hurled insults at Jesus. Aha! You are going to tear down the temple and build it back up in three days. Now come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and teachers of the law made fun of Jesus, saying to one another, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Let us see the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. The last awful step in the journey of death is about to be taken. Jesus is laid on the ground, his arms spread out. His body is hoist into place, its weight pressing on his rib cage and his lungs, making it almost impossible to breathe. A spike is driven through his feet. With painful effort, the condemned can push up on the spike in his feet to catch a breath, but to do so only prolongs the agony. I want to rage at the injustice of this, the cruelty of the Romans, the hypocrisy of those religious leaders, the cowardice of the disciples, the treachery of Judas, the fickleness of the crowd. Don't they remember? Jesus only spoke of love, even loving our enemies. How could they be so cruel to the most perfect person who had ever lived? And yet would we have done differently? Are the guilty ones those who act the nails? My sin. I want to pretend that I had no part in Jesus' indignity and death. But that's not so. Because Jesus died because of my sin. Our sin. Our separation and rejection of the God of love drove those nails. Let us pray. Lord, remind us of the deathly cost of sin. Forgive us for those things we have done that are displeasing to you. Forgive us for not allowing you to deal with the darkness that we harbor in the inner recesses of our hearts. Forgive us for fooling ourselves into believing that we are more righteous than we are, that we are better than others, and that we have no need to repent. Forgive us for those things we should have done, but found excuses not to do. Give us grace to humble ourselves before you so that our sins may be laid bare and we may know your forgiveness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus dies, Mark chapter 15. At noon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, My God, my God, why did you abandon me? With a loud cry, Jesus took his last breath. At that moment, the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The army officer who was standing there in front of the cross saw how Jesus had died. This man really was the Son of God, he said. It's dark in the middle of the day. It seems as though heaven and earth are grieving, telling us that something is horribly wrong. Christ cries out a lament from the Psalms, and we know it is a cry of human pain and desolation. Everyone has forsaken him. But there is one who still hears his prayer, the one Jesus addresses as my God. The earth shakes. 
the curtain in the temple is torn right down the middle, top to bottom. The Holy of Holies is exposed for all to see. What does it mean? Who are you, Jesus? There's even a Roman soldier who now thinks you're the Son of God. But you're dead. It's too late. What have we done? Is there any hope? You never stopped loving us, even in death. You died because of human sin, because of us. But sin is never the final word. God can redeem the worst that human beings can do. Luke chapter 23. Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I place my life. And with that, he died. And this. What can come of this? What can God do with such a final ending? On this Good Friday, we hope and we wait.